The Wimmera Mallee Solo Art Trail is the largest outdoor gallery in Australia. The trail recognises and celebrates people in the region through large murals painted onto the wheat silos. Most were built in the late 1930s. Join us as we make the 406 km journey across the eastern half of Australia's largest exhibition. Morning everyone, so we are in the northwestern central town of Charlton, my hometown, and we are going on a big adventure today. We're actually going on the path less travelled, we're actually going to the Melly, so Melly Solo Art Trail. So yeah, we're going to quite a few solos today. Yeah. The Solo Art Trail started as a small community project in the small town of Brim. The trail has since expanded and has internationally renowned artists from the entire world meet the locals, get ideas, and then transform the silos. Yep. And we're just five kilometers out of Witchy Proof. Now we're in the real Melly country because from here on the colder highway, which goes between Melbourne and Mildura, most of the way from here on it's Gun Barrel Strait. And here we are, we're, we're in the town of Witchy Proof. This is a very, very unique town, Witchy Proof, because there's a railway line that goes through the median strip right through the middle of town. And it's also the home of the world's smallest mountain. How high is it in altitude, Sarah? Uh, 148 me meters. 148 meters above sea level. Yeah, that's it. There we go. Let's, okay, let's, let's make our way to the world's... Let's go and climb the world's smallest mountain, shall we? Here we are. We're at Mount Witchy Proof. The world's smallest mountain, 148 meters above sea level. and just 43 meters above the town of Witchy Proof, which is at the start of the Mallee country in northwest of Victoria. I've always wanted to climb Mount Everest, but I've never ever actually done Mount Witchy Proof. So, Sarah and I are gonna do the unthinkable. We're gonna climb the world's smallest mountain. Here we go. Here we are, we made it. It was a tough hike. We had to walk 20 meters uphill. We are absolutely shattered. But yeah, here we are. This we're literally at the top of the world's smallest mountain. How do you feel, babe? You're at the world's smallest mountain. I'm tired, I'm exhausted, but uh, yeah. I feel like it, going up 20 meters, it's, it's hard. Yeah, exhausted. But it's worth it, yeah. Long drop toilet. <laughs> basically means it's a big hole in the ground where there's no water supply. It's common in rural areas. Have a look at this, the other side of the road here. This is very interesting actually. So yeah, this guy just keeps scrap metal of everything. And yeah, they, as I said, they literally have the train station going in the middle of the road here. Wow. <laughs> very random business, eh? So there's two pubs in which you prove here's the other pub. So you're only 11 kilometers away from Nullaw. A very small town uh, to Moser. It's only got a handful of houses. This water tower, but the most famous thing of all, our first stop of our trip today, we're going to start the solo art trail of the Mallee country. Yeah, and you see up here, there's literally only a general store here. That's it. We're almost there. Yeah, we're already there. Look. Oh, this is cool. Look at this. <laughs> here we are. The Nullul dog silos. Look at this. Smug is an Aussie street artist who painted this mural of a guy in a flannelette shirt and his Kelpie dog. Smug battled bad weather and despite this prepared this masterpiece mural. Nullawool comes from two indigenous words, Nulla meaning killing stick and Will meaning galah. A galah is like a pink cockatoo, a native Australian bird. We then continued north along the A79 Calder Highway for the next 77 kilometers to the town of Sea Lake. So this is the town of Berrawillig, a huge wheat town in the Mallee country. Got the big wheat solos here. No solo art here, unfortunately. Otherwise, just a small town with a petrol station, and that's basically it. We're growing 
grain is, it's 1892. So you can see it right from the distance as you come towards Sea Lake. We're about three kilometers from the town at the moment, but yeah, you can't see the artwork in the distance. I think we turn left here. Probably. Seems like it. Well, this one is amazing. So here it is. So we're at Sea Lake, which is like a, about, a, about 150 kilometers south of Mujura. So you got the emu there, got some sort of farming equipment I believe, and then you got the girl on the... The zookeeper is Joel Fergie, I highly recommend you check out his Instagram below on the link. He's an Aussie artist who creates work in far out places along with Drapple, if I pronounce his name correctly. The young girl swinging from a male eucalyptus tree which overlooks Lake Tyrrell, which is a huge lake just north of the Sea Lake Township. Tyrrell means space opening the sky in the local Burong indigenous language. Hence the pretty Mallee sky is also depicted in this mural. And here we have our old uh, tractor header here made out of metal. We now leave the Calder Highway and we go on the rural road southwest to the town of Lasalle's. It's 33 kilometres from Sea Lake. So we're in Lasalle's, like uh, I think it's only got a population of about 220 people Lasalle's. We can't see the wheat silo yet, we Take probably... Take the right onto Sun Ranger Highway. Yeah, but it should be to the left. There's here one here. Your destination. Yeah. Oh yeah, here it is, here it is. Here, yeah, so what do you got around here? Take the next left onto Bowie Street. Yeah, it's on the other side of the building, babe. Oh, here it is. Turn left onto you can see a face there. Yep. Yeah, so it's waking up. Here we are. So we're now at Lascelles. Here we go, a picture of an old person on the side. Right next to the train tracks, but yeah, we'll obviously we'll look out, make sure we don't get hit by any trains. And you see what sort of view we can get from the side. This artist is from Melbourne, paints murals all over the city, including an exhibition at Flinders Street Station. His Instagram is extraordinary. This mural depicts a local farming couple that has lived in the area for generations. So this is a real setup of a small country town. You have a pub next to it, you have a general store with some post boxes, and you even get some with drive through bottle shops. It says open, that's good news. Moment of truth. Looks like it's open. And look what I found. <laughs> Already arriving for you. So okay. the chicken schnitzel, what, what pizza is that babe? It's the supreme pizza. Supreme pizza, here we go. Taste test. <laughs> so hot you do even make your mouth. We've got a big outdoor area here as well. Cute, oh, cute dog. Sarah loves the animals. The big grass area here as well. Probably very popular in the summer here. Sarah and I are about to play a real Aussie game. It's called hooky board. It's basically like darts, except you throw these sorts of rings. And if you get on 13, get 13 points. And on one, get one point. I honestly can't remember the rules of the game. But you've got to try and throw the rings onto the board like this. Six. Wow, that is nice. 12, probably standing too close. Here, Sarah's playing hooky board. No, zero again. Zero again. Nothing. Still nothing. Still nothing. Oh, she got 11. Oh, six, you're making a late comeback here. Here goes Ned Kelly. Next we'll make the 50 km journey to the northwest, the most northern part of our tour today, to a place called Patchewillick. So yeah, we get thunderstorms, but yeah, we're two kilometers out of Patchewillick, which is right next to the Wiper, the Wiperfield National Park. And yeah, we're actually going to look at the Patchewillick salt. Patchwillick silos, here we are, we're about one kilometre away from them now. Magnificent Mallee sunsets, here we are. Patch Patchwillick pub, see? There's a lot of people there. It's a Christmas party or something. There we go. And the sun's just come out for arrival. I knew Sa Sarah was coming. Okay, we arrived already. Right. Here we are, we're in Patchwillick. As you can see, there are some places, like some tables to have some meals, probably families. <coughs> and that's it. 
Hmm. Yeah, let's take a better look. So these solos were painted by Brisbane artist. It was the second one to be made on the Melly Silo Art Trail. But here we go. So I think this is a local hero. The artist of this was actually from Brisbane and he actually stayed in the pub literally across the road from here to get some inspiration on what to put on these solos. And he actually met a guy, a local of the region and painted him. He's like the hardworking backbone guy of the community. Okay, so that's the Patchy Willowbrook Solos. So now we're on our way to Brim. We're going to head further south. This is the furthest north we're going today. So now we're going to make our way back towards Child along the Sunraiser Highway. There you go, there's the Patchy Willowbrook General Store. Post, post box everything. I'm just wondering what this is used for. So yeah, thunderstorms just hit where we are. And these roads have been very badly affected by flooding back two months ago so the road here is in very bad condition so with all the rainfall happening at the moment we're having to drive much slower than the speed limit of 100 kilometers per hour here i'm sitting on about 70 80 kilometers per hour right now outside now babe. Welcome to Rosebury, just south of where we were in Patchewillick. So it's near the town of of Hopeton. And here we go, look at this. Yeah, yeah this is actually this is actually made by a, a Melbourne artist. Yeah so the solo on the left creates the grit, tenacity and character of the region's young female farmers to help face off fires, droughts, you know what. And on the right is a guy, a horseman in his Akubra hat. We're now making our way another 18 minutes further south along the Henty Highway towards the town of Brim. So we're in the town of Brim. So this is our second last silo stop for the day. Let's see how it is. It's the first time I've been to this part of Victoria. We're actually very close to Warwickham Hill, which is actually the birthplace of Nicholas Cave, the famous singer who even sang a duet with Kylie Minogue, where the wild roses grow. Ooh, 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 ooh. Your destination is on the right. So the Brim silos actually show four multi-generational farmers, including one woman, and they show the resilience of those who live in the Mallee country. They've survived floods, fires, plagues, everything. But yeah, here, here they are, the four different multi-generational farmers of Brim. The Brim solos were the first of the solo art trail, which got completed in early 2016 by Guido van Helton, who's an Aussie artist. He also painted a mural in Tallinn, Estonia. Okay, off to our final stop for today. Where are we off to, Sarah? Sheep Hills. Sheep Hills, here we go. We continue along the Hensi Highway, then make a left turn into Sheep Hills. Sarah's a big fan of this singer. Who is he? Nick Cave. What's, yeah. your, favorite, what's your favorite song of Nick Caves? Uh, children. Uh, it appeared on Harry Potter, so it's yeah, my favorite song. Nice one. Okay, well, we're making our way, we're making our way through Warwick Nabil on our way to Sheep Hills Silo. That'll be the last stop for our trip, our solo art trail for today. Hope you're enjoying. Because you see in rural Victoria, if you have roads this narrow, for cars coming towards you, you have to have you have to have two wheels in the um, gravel here, otherwise you can't get past. But be very careful when you come back onto the road because 
two wheels are on bitumen, two wheels are in the gravel, otherwise you'll risk flipping your car. For most modern day cars it's okay because it's got traction control, but I'd strongly suggest, like if you go off the side of the road, ease yourself back on. So here we are, in Sheep Hills. Turn right onto Sheep Hills Minyap Road. Thank you, GPS. Carefully train. Yep, so so here, here we are, we're in Sheep Hills. Uh, just finding how to get to the silos. As uh, you can yeah, see, there's, the an old, there's an old hotel here in front of us. Looks like they closed down a very long time ago. And then you must turn right soon. Wow, well, this one is pretty. Oh, this one is amazing. So it says here, Melbourne based artist Adnanti used all his works to tell the stories of indigenous people and their native lands, particularly the stories of Aboriginal Australians. In 2016, this is the mural he came up with. Sarah was joking, saying the guy on the left looks like Gordon Ramsay, but obviously it's not Gordon Ramsay, but still, I found that a amusing comment. Hang on, no, just wait. Okay, that's it, ready, three, two, one. That's it for our solo art journey of today. We'll make our way back to Charlton, my hometown. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if there's things you don't enjoy or you have any suggestions, please let us know.